Hi guys, welcome back to the garage. My name is Aaron, if you're new to the channel and I appreciate you stopping by if you are new. So today we are gonna talk about improving our tapping abilities. And this is going back a ways. Um, I've struggled with power tapping because taps slip badly in uh, drill chucks. It's not exactly uncommon. Um, but in my case in particular, this chuck, uh, my, my go-to is this Albrecht um, zero to 13 millimeter chuck. And it works well and it's pretty accurate, but the teeth or the jaws rather are pretty worn out. And so it does not bite very well at all. Um, I'd love to get a brand new Jacobs chuck or a brand new Albrecht chuck, but um, you know, five or 600 bucks or they're, they're not cheap. And of course buying one on eBay is you're just rolling the dice that it's any better than the one you've already got. Um, something that I didn't point out yet, but happened when I was drilling the holes in the um, bandsaw table. When that drill broke, it was in this Jacob's chuck and unfortunately it messed this guy up and it, it made a pretty significant difference in the accuracy of this thing. So I, I was using it on, I guess it must have been on uh, making the, the push plates and everything and noticed, holy cow, that drill has a ton of run out and swapped it out for the, the Albrecht chuck and the chuck, the chuck was the problem, not the drill. So that guy might be toast. I don't know if it's really worth trying to fix it. I can get a rebuild kit for it, but at that point I'm into it for a fair bit of money and I don't know that it's really worth it. So what we're gonna try is to take the chuck off of the drill press. And this is the same size Albrecht chuck and it's actually in much, much better condition. Um, I don't use the drill press very often. And so there's not really a reason to have this, um, this chuck that's in really good shape over there, just kind of collecting dust for the most part. So I think we're gonna swap out those arbors on the Albrecht chucks. But the new addition to the shop is this excellent uh, Bills type, B-I-L-Z type tapping holder set. So this has got a round three quarter inch shank, 19 millimeter, and it's a quick change adapter. So you've got um, basically, it's it works kind of like a ball lock. So a ball bearing goes into this groove here and locks it into place. And then you've got these cogs on either side of the tap that uh, are driven by the, the holder itself. So popping the tap in there is held in there rigidly. Now, this is not a tension and compression type that will allow you to um, kind of over travel a bit, but it does have some forgiveness. So the tap is in there pretty rigid, but it's not in there 100% rock solid. Um, so I think that's gonna be a nice compromise for me to get you know, much better results. The taps aren't gonna slip. Um, the way the taps are held in the adapter, so this is 7 16 So we've got our standard tap, square bottom, square drive size side. So this face is ground, and obviously the shank is ground here. Um, and as you can see on the back, there is a square drive built into it. So all you have to do is push down on this center section and then stick the tap in there and line it up in the back so that it goes down into the square segment. So that guy, the tap is gonna break before the holder is gonna slip is, is my understanding of it. So this is a, a nice little set. It goes from, um, so this is size zero to uh, number six and those all have the same shank size. And of course it's still got the same um, feature on the back with the square drive and the inside. So you've got uh, zero to six, number eight, number 10, number 12, number 14 or a quarter inch. I don't know who has four, number 14 taps anymore, but there are still number 12s around. Uh, five sixteenths, three eighths, seven sixteenths, half and nine sixteenths. So it doesn't go up to huge sizes, but that is, you know, if I'm gonna be power tapping on this little knee mill, this is gonna cover pretty much everything I'm gonna to wanna to do on that. Um, sometimes I will start a larger tap in the lathe or in the mill and just to get it straight and then I'll 
run it by hand. Um, but I don't know that there's really enough horsepower to be driving, you know, three quarter inch taps in that, um, that three, three horsepower knee mill. So this is gonna be our primary tapping apparatus now. So I'm very excited about that. We'll give it a test in just a minute. And then this guy I've actually had for quite a while. This is an Enco tapping head, um, very obviously made by Tapmatic. Um, this is the TD slash DC model, I think. I can't remember exactly what their model names are, but anyway, this one does have a depth stop on it, which separates it from the normal like 50X model. Uh, unfortunately, this collar was broken by someone at some point in the past. So that piece is hard to find. I have not been able to find it online. I need to call up um, the Tapmatic folks and see if they can sell me just that replacement part. And the way this guy works is like a Jacobs rubber flex collet chuck in the lathe, um, literally the same thing made by Jacobs. So this is like a vulcanized rubber with uh, ground and I believe hardened steel, uh, you know, segments. I don't know exactly what to call those. But anyway, so those are the, the actual driving mechanism and they fit in this ground taper. So when this guy goes in here and you start cranking on this collet nut, it squeezes down on the rubber and when you get it to the right size or, you know, once you get it clamped down around the tap, um, those hardened steel bars grab onto the tap and don't allow it to slip. So same kind of thing, there is a square drive in the bottom, this one's fairly chewed up. Anyway, this is something that is a bit cumbersome to use, it doesn't just kind of pop together like the quick change style does, and so it's not something that makes sense to use all the time. The other thing about it is it takes up a whole lot of travel in your, uh, in your machine. So if you've, you know, just got a, a bridge port like I do, that takes up seven inches or something like that. It's, uh, it's quite long. So uh, when you're doing a ton of holes, like if you've got a small production run of parts and they all have to have two tapped holes in them, it's a good tool for you know, the, the drill press or the mill to just hammer through a whole bunch of, of uh, holes and allows you to, to not break taps because it automatically reverses. So that thing is pretty cool. I need to put it into use and learn how to use it safely so that when a job comes along, I don't have to do as much learning while I'm making, making something happen. So anyway, let's go ahead and switch out our uh, arbors on these two guys. At least get the R8 shank on our better Albrecht chuck. So here's our wedges. These are from Jacobs' is number six size, which it's actually not the right size for these, but I think it'll still work. And they're just wedges that are basically mirrors of each other. And so when you put them against each other like that, the sides stay parallel. So these two sides are parallel to each other. And of course, as they ride up on each other, they take up more space and eventually they will pop the arbor loose. That's the idea anyway. So a couple of different ways to do it. Um, you can sometimes get away with using the vise to uh, push against them. Actually, why don't we give that a try just for fun. The danger here, of course, is dropping your chuck. So I'm okay if the, if the arbor gets dropped. Arbors are inexpensive, chucks are not. So if we use the vise to push, Always feels a little sketchy doing this. So there we go. No problemo. It helps that this chuck is in good shape, the taper is in good shape, and it was a brand new arbor when I put it on there and it's, it's barely been used. So that's no problem. Easy enough. Real machinists, if you are easily offended, look away now. So the gap here is a little bit larger than um, on the other one. So I've just got a couple of shims under there, which are just washers to support the wedges as they get pushed in. Come on, you can do it.
There we go. And this arbor, it's got a little bit of fretting on it, but not too bad. This is um, new from not too long ago when I spun this sucker and destroyed the, uh, the taper on the old arbor. So yeah, this chuck has had a, a hard life and I'm sure it was well used before I ever met it. And um, I've done a lot of learning on it. So when you get an apprentice on equipment, usually the equipment doesn't last as long. But I know more than I used to, so that's always good. Over on our lovely Greenard Arbor Press, number three and a half. This is a five ton Arbor Press with its uh, original cast iron base. The base alone probably weighs 350 pounds. This sucker is a monster. I need a uh, daisy wheel for it. Um, so in the meantime, till I get around to that or find one, I am using just a one inch thick piece of uh, hot rolled plate. Okay, we want this to be dry. So I am using acetone, which especially in our desert climate evaporates instantly. Okay, nice and dry on both pieces. And we're just gonna stick this guy in here. Um, the other thing you can do is put the uh, arbor in the freezer. And when it warms up, it'll expand and stay rock solid, but it's not always necessary. Okay, it should be good to go. And we've just got a little piece of uh, 3 8 inch thick cold rolled steel. And I figured, what the heck, let's go for, let's go for a fun size. This is half inch 13. And we're not gonna measure or do anything special. Um, what I will do is just make a, a zero point on the DRO. And that way we can easily get back to our uh, locations once we're ready to tap them. But again, this is just for fun. Another find I got was this Eagle number 66 on eBay. I'd love to find one at a yard sale or something like that, but I haven't been so lucky. And I wanted to see what the fuss was about. So I picked one of these up. I've just used it a tiny bit so far. And so far, you know, it feels nice in the hand and everything. Um, the one thing that surprised me is just how forceful it is. When A-bombs use these over the years, I've never really noticed that it's like so forceful, but this one really, really squirts. All right, so we'll call this our zero and we can actually go ahead and just lock our why, since that's not gonna change. New drill chuck seems to be doing well. So our tap adapter is just in a three quarter inch collet. Uh, would not be bad to put it in an end mill holder and use the um, weld and shank to put a set screw on there, but I think we'll be okay. If we're not, we'll learn something, right? And then we've got our half 13 uh, spiral fluted tap. So obviously we wouldn't need this for bottoming, but this is my brand new tap. I wanna see how it works. And we just pop this dude in there. That is all it takes. Oh, excited 17 year old on prom night there. All right, um, let's see what happens. I'm gonna keep my hand on the quill wheel and then on the uh, power switch here. Hee <laughs> looks like it did just fine. Nice. Okay, let's go over to our next hole. Just 
squirt. Oops. Ha, gotta turn it around. Like nothing, this is fantastic. Wow, I am impressed. Got our half inch screw here. Probably could have used a larger chamfer on there, but that's okay. Man, that is great. So I don't think I really talked about the taps, but these are uh, made in USA hurdle taps, H-E-R-T-E-L, if you're not familiar with them. Uh, I've got them from, I got all this stuff from MSC. And um, these are uncoated, um, like I said, spiral flute semi bottoming taps, modified bottoming taps, I guess. And they do a great job down in blind holes. But um, like I said, I just wanted to try them out. Obviously, having a nice sharp tap makes a huge difference in your tapping experience. But having a rigid hold on the tap um, is probably just as important. So a lot of times in CNC shops, you'll just use a collet. So like an ER25 or an ER32 collet. And um, there's tapping collets that have a square in the bottom of them. Work kind of this, you know, similar way to this, but this is gonna be a bit more rigid. And obviously the quick change factor, this is tool free. So if I'm going through and I need to, you know, tap a half 13 hole right next to a 3 8 16 hole next to a quarter 20 hole. I just line up my taps in their little adapters and pop them in and out, no tools required. Um, so that, uh, man, that worked really, really well. Well, that's it. That is a, a quick intro to how I plan on cheating at power tapping. Got our new upgraded drill chuck. You know, drill chucks don't last forever. It's, a, it's essentially a consumable tool have a, a certain number of uses in their lifetime and they get used up. It's just like uh, driving a car or anything else mechanical. This is an AccuPro set. Uh, MSC also sells the Bills, you know, original um, style. These are usually called Bills compatible. So I'm assuming Bills is the first one that made them or Beals, I'm probably even saying that wrong. But anyway, this one is, this set is made in India. The quality seems fine. Um, the Bills set is also made in India, so extrapolate that to mean whatever you think it means. That's uh, a cheaper set for me, was worth the, uh, worth the you know, store brand version as opposed to the original. I'm not always gonna do that, but in this case, it, it seemed prudent. Save my, uh, save my pennies as I can. So anyway, I'm gonna put this in the drawer. I may or may not leave the taps in there. It seems like it may be kind of handy just having them already ready to go for the uh, most common sizes. Uh, thanks for, for checking things out. If you're, it's your first time to the channel, please stick around and hit subscribe. Leave a comment if you have something for me that I missed or you want clarification on, or maybe I thought I said it but didn't, uh, please leave it in the, in the comments below and you can see my email address down in the video description box. Thanks for coming. Again, my name is Aaron and you all have a wonderful sunny day.